I wonder what the hint will say. Hint might say something about center of mass. I think that's what this set of questions is supposed to be. Conservation linear momentum, you know. Okay, not center of mass. Never mind. Okay, we'll use conservation of momentum. <laughs> okay, so it says some 100 gram firecrackers launched vertically into the air. Okay, so I'll, I'll just start sketching again. Um, I, I do really like a doodling as I read a question. It helps me make sure that, um, helps me focus. <laughs> so there's a firecracker that's in the air. It's been launched. It's got some mass. And it says it explodes into two pieces at the peak of its trajectory. So uh, that uh, to the extent that it matters, it makes things easy. At the peak, its uh, speed is zero. Um, and yeah, because it's also launched vertically into the air. And as it explodes, um, it's describing a piece that's moving to the left. Let me give it a symbol M1. Um, it's given the mass of that, M1 to the left at some speed v1. What is the speed and direction of the other piece? Oh, uh, the, uh, the direction, I think it will be easy. It's just uh, um, to the right. Because yeah, I, I think even your intuition tells you that it's uh, uh, one piece goes to left, the other piece must go the other way. Uh, so there's the other piece of mass two, which we'll need to figure out, uh, moving at speed v2. Okay, and we are, uh, being asked for the, the speed. So as you think about this setup, I guess it, we might uh, specifically refer to this as explosion. It's almost the opposite of a sticking collision. Because in a sticking collision, two things come together and stick together and, you know, and, and, um, and then move together. Here, it started out as one thing and they split apart. And if you have the sense that uh, laws of physics is a uh, time reversal invariant, meaning when you reverse the order in which things happen, uh, the law itself doesn't change. Uh, I hope you have the, this intuition that energy is not going to be conserved here. Uh, you can actually see it the, from the fact that you started with a zero kinetic energy and you will be ending with a non-zero kinetic energy. And just like with a sticking collision, completely inelastic collision, you would expect energy to be lost. With any explosion like this, you should expect energy to increase. And we say that increased mechanical energy comes from other forms of energy, whether it's chemical energy of the explosive or something else. So just like with a sticking collision, the only thing we can use is conservation of momentum. After making sure that there aren't going to be any external forces that play a significant role. Here, there's gravity, but if you treat explosion as happening in amount of time that goes to, you know, infinitesimally small, then the fixed uh, force of gravity, it can't really provide enough impulse for your momentum to change. So, so we'll say, okay, we'll treat external forces as being insignificant. Momentum is going to be conserved. We say, uh, net initial momentum is equal to the net final momentum. And here, net initial momentum is easy, uh, zero. <laughs> started out with zero speed. Um, and it's at the, so I guess we only need to worry about horizontal motion really. But if you were worried about vertical motion, then the way to set up at the, uh, at the peak of the trajectory, vertical velocity is also zero. And that, that zero momentum is going to be a result of uh, two momenta. And here, let me depart a little bit from my typical practice and write the quantities V1 and V2 as vector quantities, meaning I'm going to write the sum of final momenta this way, M1 times V1 plus M2 times V2. Even though I know V1 is going to left, I'm not going to indicate that in my equation. Instead, the way I will indicate it is that when I plug in the number for V1, I'll plug in minus 13 meters per second. And then we'll see what comes out of V2. So um, let me be lazy again, also with this uh, uh, question, and just uh, use sage math to the remaining math. Um, once, I'm, uh, once I'm at this point, I can see that I have one equation and one unknown. So I can actually, um, 
directory. That's a little bit too quick. Technically, if I'm being really careful, I do have two unknowns. So let me write down this system of equations by writing down m1 plus m2 is equal to m. Many of you might do this math in your head and realize, oh, m2 is 55 grams. Perfectly fine. <laughs> Let me just uh, um, do it this way so that it's a more formal process where you formally indicate uh, where your information comes from. So uh, my variables are going to be m1, m2, m, v1, and v2. Uh, and let me say my equation 1 is 0 is equal to m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2. Uh, and equation 2 is uh, m1 plus m2 is equal to m. And print equations 1 and 2 so that I can verify that they look right. 0 is equal to that. That okay, all looks good. So let me solve this system of equations 1 and 2. For, um, for V2, and uh, I guess I do have to put M2 as one of the unknowns so that um, when, I, when the system solves, it'll give me expressions in terms of all other quantities that I know. M2 is the only thing that's not given in the question explicitly. So uh, let me put that into a variable so that it's uh, easy to uh, refer to it without using those underscores. Um, so that's the solution. I get a set of one solution, um, and which is indicated by this one element inside the odds outer list. And of those, I really only want V2. So I'm going to get to that with the solutions. Uh, first element of the list of set of solutions of those first element, which is my V2 solution. And I'm substituting in the numbers, and let me remember to, um, so n, that's 100 grams. And here I'm just going to put in 100 grams, even though that's not basic SI unit. Looking at the equations, I have a sense that unit for the mass will cancel out. So I'll just uh, let that cancel out and just put in numbers in grams <laughs> instead of, uh, uh, so m1 is 45 grams. Uh, v1, and here I have to be careful. Uh, I have to put it in as minus 13 meters per second for something that's moving to the left. I'm specifying this as a vector quantity in one dimensions. So, and uh, if a V2 comes out to be negative, that'll tell me my guess for the direction was wrong and I have to fix it. Okay, uh, and V2 is, yeah, positive. So to the right was right. And it's going to be 10.6 uh, meters per second. Three significant figures that ensures that your answer will be within 1% of correct answer. Good, that's it. Correct direction and correct answer. I, I don't know why feedback only says correct direction. It was even more correct than that. <laughs> so anyways, that's this question.